Anantha Benagopal, you're the Program Manager for Space and Emerging Technologies with Curtin University. Yeah. Thanks for joining us here on Australia in Space TV uh, here at the Avalon International Air Show. Thanks for having me. Uh, now Curtin's doing a lot, it's a, a, a big story I suppose, but particularly in space. Yeah. Um, what are some of the key programs that you're currently managing and also we'll get a bit of a takeaway here from your um, from your experience here at Avalon. Awesome. Um, uh, Curtains sort of have some flagship programs in the, in the area so a lot of our technologies and research comes from areas that weren't initially planned for defence, um, comes from different sectors so yeah. even in space technologies, uh, the technologies from astronomy, from mining, from uh, energy, all those different sectors come together and really provide a capability that we believe uh, is a unique edge to uh, a defense capability. So for example, even our uh, radio astronomy uh, program, so the same team that's looking at questions like where's the beginning of the universe, where do we come from, are we alone, are looking at five different defense projects on the side with DARPA, uh, with DSTG and with uh, Australian Defense as well. So it's those translation of capabilities that become quite unique at a university uh, and even with our Binar Space Program. Uh, so the program's vision is to look at a lunar prospector, uh, a 12U system around the moon. But on the pathway to there, there's a lot of uh, steps that you take where you see um, so subsystem development, payload development that has direct benefits uh, and access and um, uh, to the uh, community uh, in defense. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the translation of capability is where we work on and some of our flagship programs uh, are in uh, workforce development, um, space to seabed surveillance, robotics autonomy uh, and secure cloud platform uh, development as well. Um, well that sounds like that's the, the key challenge right and I think you mentioned sort of the, that cross-sector uh, aspect. Yeah. Your job uh, sort of specifically is to make sure that they are sort of intertwined or interdependent yeah. somehow and just to keep track of that. Yeah, and, and just to tell that story. Yeah. Because um, even if I take space to seabed surveillance, for example, uh, there's a team that goes out, uh, lays out fiber optic cables between two northwest shelves in uh, with Woodside. They're looking at marine life tracking, they're looking at whale tracking, understanding which whales are crossing by. But there's a clear defense application to that technology. Yeah in noise of, uh, of you know vessels that come across and things that you don't want to come across necessarily. Um, so again, that translation becomes so fundamental uh, and that extends from all the way to the seabed sensing technologies to space, uh, astronomy, uh, optical tracking. So the same technology that's looking at meteors coming across the sky and tracking where it's going to land and our researchers go and get meteors. But we're also working with Lockheed Martin on that technology with a program called Fire Opal in understanding space domain awareness and where characterizing satellites and where they're sort of going as well. So at a university, like it's, you're often looking at a problem from one angle, uh, but then you realize it's got a completely different novel application in a downstream sector that's relevant to defense, to industry, in many other areas. And the other aspect of Curtin University is the, your international and national footprint uh, as well. Uh, how do you sort of bring all that together uh, and then also bringing it back to Perth? Yeah, so, so Curtin has five global campuses, uh, so Sri Lanka, Singapore, Dubai and Mauritius. Uh, and uh, some of our research capability, our workforce development expertise lie um, in those ca campuses as well and there's a lot of collaboration that happens. Uh, our marine science technology group is always back and forth between Mauritius and we joke it'll be a dream destination to have uh, a second office in. but. Um, there's a lot of capability that comes from the access to the seas and oceans yes. that they have and view on the Indo-Pacific. Um, so pr around the Indo-Pacific rim when you look, and in particular in relation to defense, uh, curtains, those five campuses provide each provide a unique lens um, that adds a different perspective to our global capability. Uh, our Sri Lankan campus is heavy on, uh, again, engineering, cyber sort of, uh, and business commerce areas. Our Singapore cam uh, campus is very heavy on cyber areas and the perspective we have in Australia is, is comes from all those five different spots so it's a very unique spot to have uh, a campus in and then strategic locations uh, for our global campus. It was very exciting how have you found when we're here at the WA Defence Stand uh, here at Avalon yeah. how are you finding the show so far? Oh it's brilliant I came across uh, two years ago to Avalon yeah. and it's just bigger and better than it was uh, the jets flying across are uh, always a treat and it's tricky to sit in meetings and uh, you have to stop in between and let the jets pass off but 
Uh, it's, it's been a treat. It's been really good. And I'm uh, we're headed across to the symposium as well in two weeks, which will be quite right. exciting. So really looking, uh, this is, Avalon's provided a view on what the current state is, what yes. the current market is. Uh, opportunity to connect with our industry partners um, and, and, and likewise with other universities as well. So it's, it's been really good in connecting that community back together. Uh, and I'm hoping the bus is not as crowded on the way back. Nice. <laughs> well, Anatha, enjoy the rest of here at the Avalon International Air Show at the WA Defence Stand. But for Curtin University, thanks very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Awesome. Thanks for having me.